I've been in possession of this APC Smart UPS 1500 for a few months now and decided that I'd finally do something with it and make a little video for anybody who's interested. A few months ago I had uh, converted this APC Back UPS Pro 650 into, uh, into an inverter, added some alligator clips, etc. I made another video about that a while back and uh, converted this one from a 400 watt unit originally to this uh, 700 watt continuous inverter. Um, made some modifications inside, added a fan. You can watch that video if you're interested. But uh, I thought I'd do something pretty similar with this one, except uh, that this one will be much more capable than that one was. This is kind of a, a consumer grade unit, and this is a more professional unit. This actually has a sine wave output which is good for sensitive electronics, electric motors, that sort of thing. Um, this is a modified sound wave. And uh, I'll make a segment about that a little bit later. But uh, this is a, a 2U height rack mount unit. It, uh, I looked up the specs on it. It actually weighs 65 pounds, so it's a pretty beefy thing. There's uh, batteries in here that I'm sure make up a good portion of that weight. But despite its name, 1500, it is not a 1500 watt unit, nor is it a 1500 volt amp unit, like you'd expect. This is actually a 1440 volt amp unit, or 980 watts. Um, I'm pretty confident that by the time we're done with this, it'll be quite a bit better than 980 watts. But uh, we're going to see how, how that turns out. In any case, this, uh, like I said, is a sine wave unit, which is what makes this pretty special <coughs> in terms of inverters. Normally you have to pay a lot for a sine wave inverter, but uh, this has a sine wave inverter in it, and hopefully we can get 1500 watts or so out of it. We'll see how that works out. But uh, I don't know what else there really is to say about it, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is see if this even works. I'll plug it in and see if it turns on. Alright, I have an extension cord here. And uh, it's kind of funny. Looks like the original twist tie in here is still on the cord. A um, little bit of damage, but overall it looks all right. So plug this thing in. No noise, no clicking, no nothing. That's probably not good. And uh, try to turn it on. Nothing at all. Well, I'm not too surprised. Same thing happened with this one. Usually what happens with these units is uh, the batteries go bad and businesses throw them away rather than spending their time and resources trying to fix them. But more often than not, it's just the battery. And uh, personally, I think it's kind of silly to just dump these things when they quit working, considering that they cost six, seven hundred dollars to buy new. Um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So before I uh, do anything else with this thing, um, the first thing I'm going to do is open it up and make sure that there's no major damage inside the unit. I did a basic look through of the, the back and the bottom of the unit. There doesn't seem to be any major damage there. So the first thing to do is pop off this face, just pull straight off, and uh, check the battery. The battery seems to be connected, so that's not the problem. <clears throat> Um, so I'll just uh, whip off these screws on top. All right, here's the inside of the APC unit. Uh, I don't really see any damage in here. There doesn't appear to be any bulged capacitors or burnt transistors or broken wires or really even any signs of use. There's even, not even any dust in here. If you look at the fan on the back, this thing is almost perfectly clean. Um, the batteries even appear to be in pretty decent shape physically, they're not bulged or anything. So, uh, the, one of the main reasons to open this up is 
to look for uh, metal filings. You don't know how this thing was cared for. Probably wasn't cared for very well. And uh, looks like it's pretty clean. The case itself had some on it, so I wanted to make sure that I opened it up and looked inside. But everything in here looks all right. So I'm going to bring my attention over to the uh, battery itself and uh, see if it's just the battery that's bad. To check the battery, I'm just going to use my old Craftsman multimeter here. And uh, this is supposed to be a 24 volt battery. Um, you can look up the model number on it. I don't remember what it is anymore, but it's a 24 volt battery in these, which means that I can't just use a standard automotive battery to run this, but more on that later. So put the multimeter on it, and I get uh, 7 volts. Well, that's probably not right. So, this battery is most likely junk. Um, so I need to get this unit fired up somehow. And, as a quick check here, I'm going to plug the battery back in, and uh, also plug in the unit. And uh, if I follow the uh, the wiring in this thing, the uh, negative is connected to the uh, case of the unit, and positive actually goes over to these transistors. Um, just looking at the circuit board, looks like the middle two are positive, battery positive. So I want to see what voltage this is when it's plugged in. Maybe it's trying to charge the battery right now. And it's even lower, so it's trying to drain the battery. So, I need to get uh, a functional battery in here to make this work, but instead of doing that, I think I'm going to take a shortcut approach in trying to fire this unit up. Um, I don't think I'd recommend this method to most people, but uh, if you're careful it works out, I think. We'll find out. Alright, I think I have what I need to get this thing going. Um, the unit is still plugged into the wall, it has the battery connected. Uh, these do require a battery to run, even if you're not running them off of battery power. And uh, I have a couple of alligator jumpers here, and my 18 volt drill. Um, I don't need the drill, I just need the battery. So, to explain my uh, thought process here a little bit. Uh, for these units to turn on, <clears throat> they do need battery voltage present. It doesn't have to be good battery voltage, but it has to be high enough to uh, reach the uh, turn on threshold of the relays that uh, flip the unit on and off. And 7 volts is definitely not going to do it, given that this is a 20, 24 volt uh, battery bank. So what I'm going to do is try to uh, jump start it with this 18 volt battery. <clears throat> 18 volts should be plenty to trip the relays on. And uh, once they are on, it should use wall power to uh, keep the thing running, at least until it's unplugged. But uh, that's long enough for me to see if this unit runs or not. Um, first thing I need to do is <coughs> figure out which voltage is positive on here. Negative 19 volts. All right. So <coughs> that means that uh, this one is negative. Connect uh, negative to the uh, <coughs> to the case, and uh, obviously be careful if you're going to try this because <coughs> this is unfused, and uh, batteries don't like being shorted very much. So that's positive, <coughs> and uh, I'm just going to tap this to the positive. I don't want to keep it on here because this is a 24 volt battery and 18 volt battery that I'm shorting together that could yield to problems, but. I'm just going to tap this on here and see if it starts up. And it clicked. I think it started up. I can hear the uh, transformer buzzing. So I don't know if the rest of it's working or not, but I'm going to hook these quick before I do something stupid. Alright, so let's see if it turns on now. Well. Maybe I shouldn't do that quite yet. 
Let's see if it's charging first. Put my meter back up. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but negative here, positive here. And I'm getting uh, 27.8 volts. So it is definitely charging the battery. Um, a battery that's been that low on voltage is most certainly destroyed. So this battery is, is bad. It will never be useful again. But uh, that's fine. I already bought some other batteries for it. I never intended to use these with this unit. So let's see if it turns on. On. It's going to go through its battery test mode and fail, I'm sure. Yep, and there it failed the battery test. But uh, it shows that the majority of the guts of this unit do work. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, disassemble this a little bit further, take a few components off, and uh, then uh, kind of show what the circuit board in here is and how it works a little bit. I was turned off. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this. 30 pound battery and set that aside because it really doesn't do anybody any good anymore. Next I want to get this expansion module box out of the way because it covers things up and I can't see. Uh, I think they uh, have a, an ethernet add-in that you can optionally put in here, um, but I don't need that. So unplug this and uh, they have this plastic spacer thing on the heat sinks on the FETs that gets in the way of removing this so there's a couple little tabs here you have to pry out it's best not to break this because you do need this to keep these heat sinks from contacting the uh, grounded case of the unit and also to keep them separated so they don't vibrate and run into each other and short out that would be bad so pop that thing off and uh, now there's a couple of screws on the other side of this. Um, take those loose. Take that plate off. And uh, now this box should pop out. There's a couple little tabs, one on each side. <coughs> and the other. All right. You know what? That doesn't come out. All right, plan B. I'm going to have to take the uh, back of this case off in order to get at that. And uh, lastly, I want to put this cover back on, at least lightly, because it'll be helpful for uh, airflow reasons later. I intend to uh, put a different fan set up on this to keep it cool. And putting that cover on will help the airflow a little bit better. So, that gets that out of the way. Um, now there is... Uh, is this USB module in here on the back of the unit. It's much lighter without the battery. There are a couple of different communication ports. Uh, RS-232 requires a special cable. You can either uh, make them out of a standard cable by swapping a couple of wires or uh, they often come with these units or you can buy them online. Um, or a USB port. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use this. So I'm just going to take that USB module out. It doesn't do me any good. You know what? It doesn't do me any harm either. I'm just going to leave it. It's not really in my way. So I think that uh, gets us far enough to, uh, to see in here a little bit better. 